Today, I'm taking a look at the K7 Space Station. Now, this model kit dates back all the way to 1976, but it's gained a new release for 2023. So, back in 76, the Star Trek model line was well established with that classic Enterprise spaceship and the Galileo 7, Spock, um, and I believe the D7 as well. Model kits for Star Trek were pretty popular and they looked back at Star Trek, the original series, to find other subjects, and they found this, the space station that they could pair up with a miniature Enterprise. Now, much like that classic Enterprise set, this is not the most accurate of model kits, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, but the appeal here, once again, is the history of the model kit, that this is something that 40 years worth of modelers have built all right, let's start off with the box. It's done in a wonderful vintage box style. So we get that AMT logo, the Star Trek logo, and a wonderful shot of a built model kit. More along the side. And then in the vintage style, we have around the edge, advertisements for other exciting AMT model kits in their kind of sci-fi line. And here we can see that it does say Miniature USS Enterprise Spaceship Included. The assembled model measures 12 inches in diameter and a little pencil line drawing there. Once again, we have a built model kit along the back. A different version of the model kit than the one on the front. You can see the one on the front, especially those domes, are lit up almost like little stained glass pieces. And on the back, it's much more a traditional Star Trek space station done in Federation gray with windows picked out. There is the little miniature Enterprise. And here it says it's 15 inches wide, 29 parts. So we'll see what's right, that 12 inch or the 15 inch. We do get a dome base on this release. And of course, that miniature little Enterprise. A little different than a lot of the recent releases. There is no paint your decal guide on the inside box. Now, now let's be really clear. This tiny little Enterprise that's represented in the kit is not in scale with the space station. And the easiest way to kind of see that besides counting the decks here um, is this. This is a hangar bay. So this hangar bay might be a little bit taller than the hangar bay of the Enterprise, but really the Enterprise shuttle bay should be a maybe two-thirds of the height as this. And if you look at some of the interior shots, you can see this should be holding shuttlecraft, um, but it almost looks, kind of with this representation, that you could fit the entire saucer of the Enterprise within that hangar bay, and that's simply not the way it was. This is our Enterprise saucer, and you can see that's supposed to be two decks thick. And if we compare this to kind of the cones on top of the station, you can kind of see each of these grids. Those should be about a deck. Uh, so you can see, definitely not in scale. Here is that hangar bay piece. And you can see if these were in scale, this would probably be about eight decks tall. Uh, you would easily fit the entire Enterprise in. And that is simply not the way it was. This is a shuttlecraft hangar, not a starship hangar. I'll also take a moment right now just to acknowledge these cones are definitely not the right shape for the space station. They are too tall, um, a little too sharp in their angles. They're, they get the idea across, but these are not the right shapes. For our space station itself, you can see we have a smooth dome shape with ribs laid out on top of the space station's discs. That's not the way it was on the show, the remastered version, the original version, or the Trials and Tribulation version. These clamshells were all at different heights, almost as if they could telescope into each other. So you'd have a real narrow section, a wider section beside it, and an even wider section beside there, as if it could open up by sliding this part into this part and this part into that one. And it wasn't this these even shapes all the way around. You had a wide section here uh, that did not have any markings. 
that was the the thinnest and the wider ones moving out along either side. So acknowledging that it's not that accurate of a model kit, uh, we're building this for the history of the model to be a part of kind of that Star Trek modeling fandom. So let's get to building it. As I got near the end of my build, I was looking at this box art, which is wonderfully vintage art and kind of the way the people who made the model really misunderstood the clear pieces. And they gave us this very retro futuristic, uh, clear kind of yellow and red domes, which of course we know that's not the way it was in the show at all, but I, I kind of liked it. So, on my build, I kind of played an homage to that, and I did clear yellow for my domes. And, you know, I figured, you know, the model's not really that accurate in the first place, so why not? Why not do something a little bit fun with it? Probably lots of people who went off the box art and did these domes in clear with yellow and red and, and not just the gray that they should be. So this is my completed... K7 Space Station. And you know, with my changes to the color here, maybe I shouldn't have called it the K7. And here are all the spare decals. So you can see, I didn't need to call it a K7. You can make this um, an E8. You can make it the B3. Uh, you get extra letters, you get extra numbers. So you can make this whatever space station you like. And this is the tiny miniature Enterprise that comes with the space station. A tiny little thing. Uh, you can see it does have kind of grid lines on it. Uh, really terrible proportions. And just a very small little Enterprise. Now, I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole of what scale is this model? How big is K7 supposed to be in the first place? And there are absolutely no answers except the scale that many sites report this model as being, which I think it's reported as being one seven thousand six hundredth. Uh, it's definitely not that scale. And the thing is, when the producers were making the show, they were still trying to convince people that the Enterprise shouldn't have flames coming out the back. Uh, they were trying to convince everybody it shouldn't be UFOs and flying saucers and rockets with flames. So... The fact that they were making really cool 
space station designs like this is just a testament to what the producers were able to convince people was needed. And you can see from that box with the inaccurate domes uh, that the model makers a lot of times didn't really care that much for accuracy. I have seen reports of this space station being 200 meters. I've seen it reported as 400 meters at 490 meters. I had one person who reported it at 800 meters. So to look at the scale of this, um, let's look at some things we actually know. All right, this is my 1 1,000 scale USS Enterprise, and we know there are about nine decks in the saucer. Uh, we know that there's about two decks in the neck that aren't repeated in the saucer or the engineering hull, and we know there's about 10 decks in the engineering hull itself. So about 21, 22 decks entirely for the Enterprise. And we kind of know by counting windows from the TV show and on the model, there's about 10 decks in this upper cone uh, for the space station. So you can see there, that 10 decks on the cone line up pretty well with the 1000 scale USS Enterprise, uh, both the 10 decks that should be in the engineering hull and the eight or nine decks that are in the saucer. So there's some visual evidence that it actually fits a lot more in line with a 1 1000th scale USS Enterprise. Uh, we can also take a look at our hangar bays and you can see the hangar bay between the Constitution Starship and the space station are pretty similar in size. Once again, uh, making its features kind of be in line with a 1 1,000th scale starship. Now, further looking at features, you know, I do think that the cargo bay on the space station should be bigger than the shuttle bay on the Enterprise. So if we're talking strictly cargo bays, a 1 1,400th scale Enterprise would match up better with this. Um, if we're looking at windows between the Constitution and the space station, much, much bigger on the space station than they are on the Enterprise, uh, meaning these windows would actually match up more with the 1 650th USS Enterprise. And you know, another kind of problem trying to figure out scale is if I'm measuring this, am I measuring from here to here for length? Am I measuring from here out to here at an imaginary point that would complete the circle? So kind of hard to, to really measure and scale out. Let's just do the radius and double it to get a diameter. Uh, we have about eight and a half inches. So let's call it a 17 inch model. If you say the Space Station K7 is 300 meters, the math works out that it's about 694th scale. If you say it's 400 meters, it's 926th scale. If you say it's 490 meters, it's about 1134th. And really, um, you could say it's anywhere from 30 to 50 decks, and reasonably it would be within the size of the USS Enterprise 1 1000th scale. So there you go. I'm going to call it 1 1000th scale for my collection um, and pair it up with my 1 1000th USS Enterprise. It would also be great with a 1 1000th scale D7 circling around it. And of course, you could have a 1 1000th scale USS Defiant kind of cloaked around it. And of course, an homage to one of the best Deep Space Nine episodes ever, the anniversary episode trials and tribulation. Now this model is not going to be for everyone. It suffers from the same things a lot of old models do. It's not really accurate. It's hard to judge a scale. The parts don't fit that well. Um, there is a lot of putty work to fit these arms into the station. Uh, there's a lot of putty work along these bottom seams. And even with a lot of sanding and painting, once you've got a little bit of paint on it, you can see those seams just kind of keep coming back on those halves. Stylistically, it's it's a real simple paint job. The most accurate thing to do is just paint the entire thing gray, excluding the windows, and put the decals on it. All of this pre-shading and accenting the ribs of the station, that makes my model more fun to do, but less accurate. Um, it really should just be 
a solid utilitarian gray. But, you know, I, I want to just have a little bit more fun building it. I wanted to give it a little bit more distinct appeal. So I did the pre-shading. I did kind of the different colored domes. It's another bad seam there. Obviously more modern model kits, you wouldn't have to worry about that at all. But all in all, if you like collecting the old and classic Star Trek model kits, this would be a great one to pick up. If you're looking at setting up a cool display with a 1,000 scale US Enterprise or the 2,500 scale line. Um, and like I said, there was an even argument that it could be closer to the classic 650th Enterprise. If you're setting up a display of the classic TOS Star Trek ships, this would be a great one to have in it. All in all, maybe not a model kit for everyone, but definitely one that collectors and the vintage Star Trek model fans will definitely want to get their hands on. And it is being put out again this year by AMT and round two. It should be getting to the store shelves very soon. And hopefully this gave you just an idea of what goes into the model kit. Um, some of the challenges you'll have with it, mostly get ready for a lot of trying to smooth out seams and sand things and try and come up with something that can make it a little bit more interesting than just um, a solid gray. It is kind of fun to get your hands on some of these old model kits that people have been building for decades and see what you can do to put your stamp on it. As always, a big thank you to AllScaleTrek.com forums, a big thank you to Round2 and AMT for letting me work on this review copy, and a big thank you to all of you for following the channel and watching the builds. Thank you guys very much, and we'll be back soon.